Hey everyone, Kevin here with Divinely Design, and we have a soap video today. And this is actually going to be kind of a, a unique, a special kind of video. Um, so in front of me, you can see I have a whole bunch of supplies laid out already. So right here we have um, the newest book um, from Anne Marie, the Soap Queen, um, uh, called Pure Soap Making. And they, uh, they actually called me up and said, you know, would I like to try one of the recipes from the new book that was coming out? And this recipe is actually sold as a kit on Brandleberry. So I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, so full disclosure, they sent me this uh, kit uh, for free. And uh, I'm gonna try it today. I've never used a kit from anybody. Um, I've always done uh, soap making, you know, designing my own recipes um, and just made it from either things that I have researched or gotten from books that I've purchased or read online or whatever it is. Um, but this recipe that I'm gonna do is uh, created by Anne Marie um, and the Brambleberry team. And I actually have the entire kit here. So the book itself is pretty cool. Um, she has another book out, so it's kind of similar to that, I would say. It is, it's, it has a ring binding in it, so, which is nice if you plan to follow along with this, you can lay it flat on a surface and not really have to worry about pages kind of flipping up and down. Um, it, it, it has a lot of information in it, um, and I would say it would be really good for kind of a new soap maker to kind of intermediate level, somewhere, somewhere not like a brand new first time, um, although it, it offers lots of great basic information in here. Um, I would say some of it is a little bit advanced, actually. Um, I think uh, it, is, it is a valuable resource if you are interested in soap making and certainly don't have a... Um, other, you know, books, it goes over a ton of great information that you will be curious about if you are a new soap maker. Some of it you just may not use right away, I would say. But um, I have a couple things I thought I would just show that I really liked. Uh, let's see here. This first one, this first section I really liked was, um, it has a section about um, properties of oils. So it contains, you know, different kinds of oils, their saponification values, um, as well as the properties of those oils. So that's really great. I, I, I actually, um, I have several books. I'm sure I have a couple of references that contain that information, but normally I go online if I'm looking for some specific piece of information. So it's nice to have it in print as well. Um, one of the other things I really liked in here, they did a color swatch kind of thing where they looked at natural colorants and they, they show you kind of the colors of different kind of natural things. But the interesting thing here also is what it looks like fresh um, after it's cut and then what it is five months later. So one of the really cool things um, I like is they have the annatto seed, which is right here, which is this really bright yellow, but then you can see the five month one um, turned to be almost just a, like a natural soap, uncolored soap kind of thing. So there's a color swatch section in there I thought was pretty cool. Um, what we will be doing today from the book itself is actually a recipe from this kit, and uh, it's called the Aloe Vera Hanger Swirl. So the recipe is all contained in here with step-by-step -step instructions, um, uh, as well as some pictures of how to do things. And then the kit itself contains everything that you need to do this particular soap. So over here, there's um, coconut oil. Uh, this is some lye or sodium uh, hydroxide. Rice bran oil, olive oil, aloe vera liquid, castor oil. Uh, this is deodorized coconut oil. And then down in the front there, um, we have green uh, chromide oxide, cedarwood essential oil, um, sodium lactate, and then below that is some titanium dioxide, and over here is some lavender 4042 essential oil. Uh, and finally, all the way over here is hydr hydrated 
chrome, um, chrome green oxide for some colorings. So it contains all those things, plus in the kit you get um, this five pound wooden mold that has um, a silicone lining that comes in with it. And the mold itself has a sliding base as to help when you're ready to get the, um, the soap out. And the kit contains with a hanger swirl tool. Now this is, um, this is interesting. Uh, it's, it's a very firm wire that's plastic coated, so it should be really easy to uh, clean up. Uh, it's pretty firm. It's not quite as uh, rigid as, say, um, like a thick coat hanger. Um, it's probably along the same lines, but I have some like old school like coat hangers that are really stiff. It's a little bit less um, stiff than that, but it certainly seems like it'll work well to be able to do hanger tools and it's certainly bendable enough that you could then, um, you know, put this to other size molds if you wanted. So this is the whole kit that if you order the kit, it all comes with this. The liner, the mold, the tool, all of your oils and lye. Uh, about the only thing you really need is to add water um, and then you can make your soap. Um, okay, so uh, that's what we're going to be doing today and uh, uh, I'll be, I'll be uh, filming the making of this and I'll be following along with the recipe from the book itself. So, alright, stay tuned, let's get to soap making. So, I realize I haven't done a video in a long time where I've actually kind of gone step by step and showed measuring out and prepping and all those things because typically I'm interested in the videos being pretty concise and efficient. But for this one, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a longer video, so I'm going to go through measuring and things like that. If you are someone who likes shorter videos, you may want to skip ahead. So the first thing I like to do is prep all of my colors and fragrances so that I am ready for um, uh, the soap making when I'm actually there. Now I will say the one thing I've done before this is I've measured out my lye and water and I didn't film that. And the reason I usually do that first is because when you mix lye with water, it produces an exothermic reaction. It makes it hot, right? So I have that mixed already and setting in an ice bath just so it can cool so I can continue soaping a little bit later on. But let's go through getting the colors ready. So I have some oxide, and this recipe calls for about a tablespoon dispersed in some oil. So I've already mixed my two colors, so we'll mix the third one. This is the uh, green chrome oxide. And I've just taken about a tablespoon and put it into some olive oil that I have in a small little cup here. And then I have a... Um, uh, a, a little tiny blender and let's see if I can get this without actually getting my hand in the way of the camera here and then I'm just gonna mix it up nice and thoroughly so that oxide gets nice and dispersed and it's all ready to be added to my soap batter later on Okay, all right, so we have our three colors ready to go. Okay, next is measuring out our essential oils. Um, I have my scale ready. I have my glass that I'm gonna put my essential oils in, my two essential oils. And then another great thing for measuring out essential oils is a little wooden stick or a chopstick or uh, something like this, a coffee stirrer would do. Um, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to take my glass and put it on my scale and then tear out my scale, which makes just zero it. This essential oil blend calls for 0.7 ounces of cedar wood. And to make this pour a little easier, because sometimes if you pour from the bottle, it'll leak down the side and all over the place. Take your little wooden stick or stir and put it to the lip of your, your fragrance jar and let the oil run down the stick.
Okay, that's 0.7 of a cedar. And then 1.8 ounces of lavender 4042. So again, I'm going to tear my scale and do the same thing looking for 1.8 ounces. Well, I'm getting some drips there, so this isn't working great. <laughs> okay. Oops. Well, and I have a little bit of oil that's on my scale there. So I'm going to go over a little bit to compensate for that, that little oil that's sitting there. Okay. All right. That's our fragrance oil, which I'm going to set aside with our colorants. Okay. The recipe calls for one and a half uh, teaspoons of sodium lactate. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Okay, and then that's going to go with my colors and my fragrance to the side. Okay, it calls for three ounces of aloe vera liquid. Right. That goes with the rest of my preparatory ingredients to the side. Okay, so now we're on to our oils. Um, again, I have my scale. I have my bowl. I'm going to put my oils in and I'm going to tear it out. I'm going to start with my deodorized cocoa butter because it's a solid and I actually want to put it in the microwave and melt it, and then I will use the other oils, which are kind of at room temperature, to help bring the temperature of those hot oils that I'm melting down a little bit so that I can so soap a little bit cooler. So this recipe calls for 5.5 ounces of deodorized cocoa butter. I've taken the cocoa butter up and I've chopped it up into little pieces, so it's easier to measure out. I'm going to take this to the microwave and melt it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, my oil, uh, my uh, cocoa butter is all uh, melted, and I'm going to add the other oils. So next, it, I'm going to add the uh, coconut oil, and it calls for 13.7 ounces. It comes in this uh, bag, which I actually put in some hot water earlier on before I started prepping so that it would be nice and liquid, because uh, this was kind of firm. But... Um, it's not, it's not hot anymore. It's, it's probably a little bit warm, but okay. So 13.7 ounces. Oh, let me tear this. This bag's pretty handy, actually. Maybe you're poor. Okay. So that's the coconut oil. Then let's do 11 ounces of rice. Seven of castor. Is 22 ounces of olive oil. Now, I will tell you, I find this is one thing I find a little strange for this kit is they do include um, olive oil, but I think this is only 16 ounces. So um, I have plenty of olive oil on hand, uh, but the recipe calls for 22. 
So um, let's use what they gave in the kit. measured out and now we're gonna get ready to make some soap okay so I have my my oils measured out my lye water measured out um, temperature wise my oils are around 90 degrees and my lye water is around 70 now I've been following along kind of with what the book says and how to do the recipe she does call, or the recipe calls, to have these a little bit higher temperature, like between 100 and 120, I think is what the book says. Um, I, I just prefer to soap a lot cooler than that, um, so I'm going to deviate a little bit from the recipe. Um, the recipe also says to um, uh, divide up the, once I mix this up, to divide the batter into three containers and then pour the fragrance in each, a third in each. But I think I'm going to add the fragrance in all at once and then divide them up into three containers and then do the colors um, after I've divided them up. I have prepped my mold a little bit um, because this silicon mold is um, thin, which is good because it sticks right against up there. But it is a little bit sort of flimsy and falls in. So since I'm planning to pour it in here, I just use clips to hold it up, which I can sort of take off quickly. Now, design-wise, the book says to sort of use a spoon and plop it in, which I will do if it gets thick. But if not, I'm probably going to do more of a drop swirl where I'm going to pour it in the mold itself and then use the hanger tool to kind of stir things up a little bit, okay? So I'm deviating a little bit from the book, but it's still pretty close. Okay, so um, the book does say that to add the sodium lactate to your lye water. I, I don't usually do that. Um, in fact, I don't know that I've ever done that, but I certainly will try it right now. Okay, so this is my sodium lactate. I'm just gonna pour that in there. Give that a good stir. Oh, and if you're wondering, this is a this is my stick blender holder. After I've used it, I can put it in there. And I have some just a little bit of uh, soapy water in there, uh, so I can clean off my stick blender. This is actually one of my subscribers made this for me and sent it to me. I love it. Okay, so here we go. Lye water is going to go in. We're going to blend to a thin trace. Add the fragrance. Um, uh, divide them up into three containers. Color them separately and then into the mold we will go. Okay. Okay, I'm putting my stick blender all the way at the bottom at an angle. So if there's any air trapped in the bottom, I can sort of tap it to get that air out. And then I'm going to... So let's put a third in each. These are probably going to be pretty full because this is... fragrance. Oh, and I, I forgot to put the, the um, aloe vera juice in also, so I'm going to divide that up now too. About a third in each here. And then about a third of the fragrance. We're going to do colors. So I think 
since this is so fluid, again, in the book, it calls for letting it thicken and then sort of plopping it in with a spoon and doing kind of colors like that. Um, I prefer drop swirls, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a drop swirl. And we'll use the hanger tool, though, also. Doing half of the... left over just just sort of what's in the containers here try to do a little bit of a and I think I'm changing my mind I don't think I'm going to use the hanger tool here which I hope doesn't disappoint you but I think I like this color combination that I've done as a drop swirl and I think I want to leave it alone um, but let's see if I can get some a kind of cool top here. And I'm just going to try and do lines, nice thin lines. I'm not going to go deep uh, in the soap. I'm going to just try and stay on the top and I'm just going to do back and forth kind of pattern here. I'm going to leave it just like that. Um, now, the, the recipe also calls to insulate this soap. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you probably know that I am a big fan of putting my soaps in the fridge to try and prevent gel. And specifically, I'm trying to present, prevent that partial gel so I get, you know, so you don't get that like circle in the middle that discolors. And it's really just for aesthetic reasons. I, I just like, you know, I want my soap to be um, um, nice and even looking, but in the formula, she actually says that, you know, she thinks that um, gelling this soap helps develop the colors more. So I'm actually going to do that for once. I'm going to put this on my counter. Um, I'm going to uh, cover it um, probably with a cutting board and then uh, wrap a towel or two around it so I can insulate it. And then I'm just going to leave it there overnight. So, um now the recipe says don't unmold it for 48 hours. We'll see how it goes. Um, I usually unmold mine around 24 hours. Most of my recipes, I did use sodium lactate here, so it should firm up, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but after the break should be the unmolding of this aloe vera swirl soap. All right, stay tuned. Okay, everybody, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so this this sat overnight. I, I wrapped it. I actually have, um, it was on this counter, and right below here is my dishwasher. So I actually turned my dishwasher on, which heats the counter. It actually gets warm. So this is where the soap sort of sat, and I covered it with some towels. And when I got up this morning, um, it, was pretty, it was pretty warm still. So I, I think it went through gel, but... Anyway, so we're going to take this out. Now, I think it's still a little soft, but I think it's okay. Um, it feels firm enough. Um, okay, so I think I'm just going to take out... Okay, that was pretty easy. Ooh, that, 
is beautiful. Nice glossy sides. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty long mold here. I'm actually just going to turn it over, I think, and sort of peel the That was beautifully easy. Look how glassy smooth those sides are. That's great. Now, this is too long for my cutter. Um, and if you're thinking about buying a cutter, here's my one piece of advice. I bought this um, a long time ago, and I like it. It's very sturdy. Um, I've never even had to tighten any of the, the wires on it, but because these sides are straight, um, I can only cut certain lengths. There are other cutters that have the ends that are um, rounded, and that would allow you to cut longer ones. So uh, I'm going to cut this down in size. I've already marked it off. clean off my wires so I don't get any drag marks through the soap I'm going to cut. Okay. Sweetened. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's a little tiny bit soft, but not bad at all. Because it just slides beautifully. Same. That is gorgeous. Perfect. Those colors are beautiful. I love that. Um, that kind of blue-green color. Um, I like the, I mean, I like the olive green color to it. I, they're a good co color combination, but, um, I really like that sort of blue green one. Mmm, and this combination is nice. I am not a huge fan of straight lavender, um, but this combination with the cedar wood is very nice. It sort of mellows it out some. All right. Let me cut the other one. Now this was a five pound um, recipe and the mold is a five pound. So it makes a bigger loaf than I am used to, to you making. Um, now if I had a bigger cutter let me just see, you know, between the end pieces. So normally when I have a loaf, I have some end pieces, which I actually like because I usually use them myself. So that's how much I kind of got left over because of my cutter. Um, it's almost, it's almost a full bar, um, sort of at end pieces, but I don't mind so much. Okay, so as we're wrapping up this video, um, I have, so again, you know, I, Brambleberry sent this to me for free. Um, my impression of the book is good. I really like the book. I think if you are a beginner soap maker, um, it's a great book, probably a reference book, uh, as well as sort of a, 
educational in terms of getting started. I think it's a good reference. I think some of the, um, uh, I think some of the, let's see if I can get a little, let's get on camera here. Um, I think some of the, you know, I think some of the, uh, um, recipes or things in it are probably a little bit advanced for a beginner, but um, kind of an intermediate soap maker. I think it's perfect for, again, for a beginner. I think it has lots of great information for it. Beautiful pictures, just like her first book. Um, and uh, it really touches on a lot of, like a lot of things. It covers pretty much all of cold process, like from super fatting to uh, water discounts, colors, uh, essential oils, um, gelling it talks about. It talks about things like um, environmentally sourcing. It, it, it has a little bit of a discussion on palm oil in there, um, sort of pros and cons. So I, I like the information in the book. I think it's a really, it's a really good book. Um, the kit itself uh, was great. I mean, I, I love the kit. Um, I think it retails for, gosh, I want to say like a hundred, uh, I should have looked this up first. 160 or 170 somewhere in there for the kit which you get the wooden mold the silicone liner the um, uh, hanger swirl tool plus all of the oils uh, and ingredients to make this one batch of soap which gives you 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 one inch bars uh, so you know, I, that's pretty good, I think. Um, so my one criticism, I would say, from, uh, because the, the recipe is in the book for this particular kit, um, the one criticism I have is that uh, the kit itself had 16 ounces of olive oil and the recipe calls for 22. Not, I mean, not a huge deal, I guess, because if you're if, uh, if you're a soap maker, you almost assuredly have olive oil around. So I, I don't think it was that, that big of a deal. The recipe also called for aloe leaf powder, uh, and the kit doesn't contain that. Again, I don't think it's a big deal. I just simply omitted it from this recipe. It does include the aloe vera liquid, which I've included in here. Um, but uh, so, so uh, I, that's my one small criticism. Um, and I guess the other thing is the measurements in the book are in ounces, which is fine, I suppose. I am much more used to doing it in grams. I used to do it in ounces and then switch to grams because grams are so much um, uh, smaller amounts of measurements that when you're pouring your oils and things like that, if you go over a gr like by one gram or so, um, it, it's not such a big deal, right? I mean, if I, you know, if I'm over by one or two grams of an oil, I just move on, especially if you're super fatting around, um, you know, like 5%. You've added a tiny, tiny bit to that super fat that you've uh, calculated. So I find that grams make it easier for me in terms of measuring and putting the, the recipe together. And the recipe here is in ounces, which is fine. I think there are lots of people out there who still use ounces. Um, to do recipes. And if you're a beginning soap maker, I think learning um, the important part is really just learning the measuring and making sure you're doing accurate measurements. Um, and then as you grow as a soap maker, you, you might choose to, you know, move from ounces to grams or you might stick with um, ounces as well. So, um, so that's, so that, that's my impression of the kit and the book itself. I really like them overall. Now, the, the, uh, the last thing I will end on here is, you know, I have, uh, Brambleberry sent this to me for free. Um, so, um, I have, um, over the course of time now, I've been asked by companies to do product reviews, um, and, and, you know, they would send me free things and then I would review them. I've been asked to be an affiliate for some companies and really up to this point, I've kind of said no, because for my YouTube channel, I really, I like to be transparent. That's why I go over recipes. I try to source for you, um, you know, all of the things that I'm using, where I get them from. Um, I, I really want my YouTube channel to be informational and helpful to soap makers who are out there. Um, now, that being said, I don't think getting products to review is a bad thing at all. I have just felt like if I get products for free, 
then I'm sort of um, obligated to sort of um, say good things about them or the company or whatever it is. Um, and I've never really wanted to do that. I just wanted to give you an honest opinion. Um, now, Brand Blue Lawyer didn't ask me to do a video or a review or anything like that. They, they didn't ask me to do anything else. They just asked me if I would like to um, uh, have, have this kit and sort of try it out. Um, but obviously I do soaping videos, so I wanted to make a video about it. But So anyway, so here's my question for you guys. What do you think um, about doing product reviews where, um, uh, like, like if I were to get products for free and to do a review, or what if, what if I were an affiliate for certain, um, you know, soap making companies, or what if I did pro paid product uh, reviews? Um, there are some sources of income for YouTubers um, where you can hook up with a company that will ask you to do a review of their product or a video of their product. Um, and, and then you get paid as a YouTuber. Um, most of those opportunities are for, you know, really big channels. So big channels that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers or even millions of subscribers. But there are some of those who are um, looking for smaller YouTube channels like mine that have um, in excess of 10,000 subscribers. But in the YouTube community, that's still kind of a small channel, I would say. Uh, but anyway, what, what are your thoughts on that? You guys tell me. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to think. Um, I've read some other YouTubers uh, do blog posts and things about that where they say when they, you know, if they start to make those kind of transitions where they're they're affiliated with certain companies or doing product reviews that they get a lot of negative feedback. Um, uh, by the same token, you know, that, that would be revenue that I would have that would go to um, producing more videos and better quality videos and, and all of those things. So um, anyway, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this topic, on, on being an affiliate, on getting products for free and doing uh, reviews and things like that. Uh, I haven't really done them up until this video. Oh, excuse me, up until this video where um, Bram Blair sent this to me for free. But I still think I've given you a very honest review of it. Um, uh, I really liked it. The, the, the mold is really solidly well built. The silicone liner was super easy to use. It came out of the mold just perfectly. You watched me do it here. I haven't used any of this stuff beforehand. This video has walked you through from step, from start to finish of me using the kit um, in conjunction with the recipe that's in the book. So you have pretty much watched everything I have done with this and, and hopefully you can form kind of your own opinion as well um, uh, about about this, uh, this product. So, okay, that's it for now. I know this was a longer video. If you've stuck with, thanks so much for sticking through the whole video. Uh, comments, questions, leave them down below. Please let me know what your thoughts are on this topic. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, click on that subscribe button and please like this video. Um, and uh, that's it for Kevin here at Divinely Design. Check back for more soapy and crafty videos. Bye y'all.